I want us to quickly share the word of God concerning prayer. I think when Rev asked me to share today, it's because he knows the deep desire that God has placed in my heart concerning prayer. And uh, prayer is exciting. Prayer is exciting. Be excited. Prayer shouldn't be hard work. In Kikuyu, we say digging hard ground. I'm sure you've translated for yourself what I said. Digging hard ground, that's not prayer. Because prayer is a place of fellowship. Prayer is a place of communion. Prayer is a place of, it's our hotline, just as we are saying, it's our hotline. And um, our focus is on the book of 1 Samuel, so allow me to read. I'm going to read 1 Samuel chapter 1. It's a long scripture, but walk with me. Walk with me so that we can be able to hear what God is saying today. For the online audience, thank you so much for joining us for service. Today, we really appreciate you. First Samuel chapter 1, we're going to read the whole chapter. And it says, Now there was a certain man of Ramith, Zophim, of the mountains of Ephraim, and his name was Elkanah, the son of Jeroham, the son of Elihu, the son of Tohu, the son of Zuth, an Ephraimite, and he had two wives. The name of one was Hannah, and the name of the other was Penina. Penina had children, but Hannah had no children. This man went up from his city early to worship and to sacrifice to the Lord of hosts in Shiloh. Also, the two sons of Eli, Hophni and Phinehas, um, the priests of the Lord, were there. And whenever the time came for Elkanah to make an offering, he would give portions to Penina, his wife, and to all her sons and daughters. But to Hannah, he would give a double portion, for he loved Hannah, although the Lord had closed her womb. And her rival also provoked her severely to make her miserable because the Lord had closed her womb. And so it was, year by year, when she went to the house of the Lord, that she that she provoked her, therefore she wept and she did not eat. Verse 9, then Elkanah, her husband, said to her, Hannah, why do you weep? Why do you not eat? And why is your heart grieved? Am I not better to you than ten sons? So Hannah arose after they had finished eating and drinking in Shiloh. Now Eli, the priest, was sitting on the seat by the doorpost of the tabernacle of the Lord. Verse 10, and she was in bitterness of soul and she and she prayed to the Lord and wept in anguish. Then she made a vow and said, O oh Lord of hosts, if you, are, if you will indeed look on the affliction of your maidservant and remember me and not forget your maidservant, but will give your maidservant a male child, then I will give him to the Lord all the days of his life and no razor shall come upon his head. Verse 12. And it happened as she continued praying before the Lord that Eli watched her mouth. Now Hannah spoke in her heart, only her lips moved moved, but her voice was not heard. Therefore, Eli thought she was drunk. So Eli said to her, how long will you be drunk? Put your wine away from you. But Hannah answered and said, no, my Lord, I am a woman of sorrowful spirit. I have drunk neither wine nor intoxicating drink, but have poured out my soul before the Lord. Verse 16, do not consider your maidservant a wicked woman, for out of the abundance of my complaint and the grief I have spoken until now. Then Eli answered and said, Go in peace, and the God of Israel grant your petition, which you have asked of him. And she said, Let your maidservant find favor in your sight. So the woman went her way and ate, and her face was no longer sad. Then they rose early in the morning and worshipped before the Lord and returned and came to the house at Ramah. And Elikanah knew Hannah, his wife, and the Lord remembered her. So it came to pass in the process of time that Hannah conceived and bore a son and called his name Samuel, saying, Because I have asked him from the Lord. Now the man Elkanah and all his house went up to offer to the Lord the yearly sacrifice and his, and his vow. But Hannah did not go up, for she said to her husband, Not until the child is with then I will take him, that he may appear before the Lord and remain there forever. So Elkanah, her husband, said to her, Do what seems best to you. Wait until you have weaned him. Only let the Lord establish his word. Then the woman stayed and nursed her son until she had weaned, uh, weaned him. Verse 24. Now when she had weaned him, she took him... She took him up with her with three bulls, one ephah of uh, flour, 
flour and a skin of wine and brought him to the house of the Lord in Shiloh and the, and the child was young. Then they slaughtered a bull and brought the child to Eli and she said, O oh Lord, as your soul lives, my Lord, I am the woman who stood by you here praying to the Lord. For this child I prayed and the Lord has granted me my petition, which I asked of him. Therefore, I also have lent to the Lent him to the Lord, as long as he lives, he shall be lent to the Lord. So they worshipped the Lord there. Spirit of the living God, I depend on you, not on my words, not on my notes, but on what you want to accomplish this morning. Thank you that there is so much that you have placed in us to share today. We thank you that you are our teacher. This morning we subscribe to your school, we enroll to that school that we may learn from you. We know, Lord, your word says in Romans 8, that, Lord, we do not know how we ought to pray, but we can depend on you right now to teach us how to pray. Lord, calm my nerves. Speak to me. My ears are open to hear from you. And use my mouth. In Jesus' name I pray. Now, last week we had uh, Reverend Gitao take us through uh, quite a bit about Hannah's story. And I believe, and I believe, are you able to hear me? And I believe we got quite a lot of lessons that we were able to learn. One was about Hannah's heart. Can we remember? The second one was about Hannah's history, right? And the third one was Hannah's heart, Roho. The first one was heart, the pain. Then history. Then Hannah's heart. And I'm sure we can relate in different ways to the history of Hannah. And we shall continue to progress on looking at this particular scripture about prayer because it's such a powerful scripture concerning prayer. And today we are going to be looking at what we are entitling encountering prayer. And basically what encountering prayer is. Why should men pray? Why should you pray? Why is it important? Why should you pray? And allow me to share an experience shortly of an experience that I had that, that made me know and learn that even prayer is in levels. The people who pray is in levels. I have a friend who is not here today. Um, she's married and she has a very prayerful mother-in-law. And one of the days we were praying, we were actually praying that my friend would get a transfer because when she got married, she, she was working, we were working in Meru and the husband was working in Nairobi, and they had just gotten married. And we kept trusting in the Lord that she would get a transfer to move. I was able to move fast to come this way, but she was stuck on the other side. So they would do the frequent trips. This weekend, the husband comes, the other weekend, the wife comes, and it was too strenuous for them. And so we began to pray and ask God, Lord, would you make a way for this transfer to happen? And so one day I visit uh, their home. She's, she's, she's come to visit. I'm also visiting, and the mom-in-law is also around. And she says, no, the mom-in-law says, no, today is the day we get to pray about this thing. And I loved when she closed her eyes because when she closed her eyes to pray, She's those ladies who pray very powerful prayers in Kiswahili. And this is what she said. She said, Baba mungu tumekuja mbele zako. Kuombea hi transfer. Baba tumeomba maramingi. Lakini sasa tumefika mwisho wa kuomba. Sasa leo tumekuja mbele zako kutoa amri. <laughs> we opened our eyes. Or I, at least I did. I was like, where? What's going on here? We've moved from prayer, now we are giving commands. Let me tell you, let me tell you, let me tell you the power of your words. That week, I'm not talking about three weeks, I'm not talking about a miracle that took a month. That week, when I moved this way, I moved to a branch called Gedongori. That week, the level in which my friend was working, where she was in Meru, they didn't have her level in my branch. You know, like, she couldn't do a counter transfer to my branch because there was no position like that. She was on a higher level on the other side. That week, a level was created of the same, not because of her. We just received communication. Your branch has been upgraded um, because of the upgrade that you have received. So you need this level of a manager. And because you leave this level of a manager, we are looking for one. So she quickly wrote to the bosses and said, hey, before you get someone to switch, how about I switch from that side, I come this way, so that you guys had higher to the other side. In two weeks, she had moved. Wow. 
And to date, this is over seven years ago, I still remember that prayer. That there are days you will need to ask. But there are days you will learn the power that God has given you in your mouth. That you will learn that there is a place of command. Kutoa, ah? So share with your neighbor for a minute. What is your belief of prayer? What do you think prayer is? For a minute, engage your neighbor. What do you think prayer is? Yeah, I have heard you, the one who said kutoa amri. <laughs> I believe you have been able to get to know what prayer is from your neighbor, what they believe about prayer. And for me, what I believe is that prayer, let me have your attention for a minute, or maybe for a few more. <laughs> I believe that prayer is our direct line with heaven. Prayer is our direct line with heaven. It's a communication process that allows us to talk with God. Not to God, to talk with God. And he wants us to communicate with him. Just the same way one person to another are able to communicate. And the way we relate in our prayer life dictates what sort of relationship we have with our Father. I believe you know that different levels of relationships call for different levels of communication. Employers don't talk to employees the way husbands talk to their wives. Right? Isn't that true? Lovers don't talk to each other. The same way a mother, a parent, talks to a child. So our level of relationship with our father also says a lot about our ability to be able to communicate with God. And my prayer for each one of us is that we we'll desire the place of relationship, grow in relationship so that we can speak to God. And when we look about encountering prayer, why is it that we need to pray? I looked at the dictionary meaning of what it means to encounter, and it was saying it's a meeting between hostile functions or person. It is a chance or an accidental meeting uh, or a particular kind of meeting or experience with another person. But for the purpose of my sharing today, I'm going to define encountering prayer as a, as, as a type of meeting or an experience with a person. So when you're encountering prayer, you are actually giving yourself an opportunity to experience. It's a moment. It's an experience. But more often than not, what we do in our prayer life is that we just show up, we wrap our needs, and then we leave. So we have no encounter. And that's how it turns to become hard ground. Because all we know is to vent out, release, and walk out. And God in heaven is like, wait, 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 wait. I've not spoken, wait. And by that time we have left and gone. But we need to realize that prayer is an encounter. And why should we pray? Because Jesus said it's important for us to, to pray. Luke 18 verses 1, what does it say? As Jesus is introducing the parable of the widow and the judge, he begins Luke 18 verses 1 and says, Then Jesus told his disciples a parable to show them that they should always pray and not give up. Prayer is not an option. Especially in the days that we are living in, you can't afford to live a prayerless life. You will be a defeated Christian. You can't afford. So Jesus says, you must pray and never give up. I like what one, one of the guys that I follow, who is, who's, who's, who's a prophetic voice, I think in Australia, he said, in his absolute sovereignty, God has delegated a huge amount of authority and responsibility to his people. He has set up the universe in such a way that our prayers really make a difference. Your prayer really makes a difference. And heaven is moved by our prayers because our God has chosen to respond to the intercession of his people. That's a decision that God has made. So if things are not happening on earth, it's because we haven't toward Amri. We haven't commanded situations to align to the promises of God. Hebrews 4.16 says, Let us approach the throne of grace with confidence so that we may receive mercy and find grace to help us in our time of need. So what is it that gives us the confidence to approach this throne of mercy and this throne of grace? The foundation of our confidence to pray is in two attributes of God and he doesn't change. 
God is the same yesterday, today, and forever. You can count on that. The two attributes that we need to know about God, one is his ability. And what, what pushes us to confirm that God has an ability? One is that he's omnipotent, meaning that he's the all-powerful God. Number two is he's omnipresent. Even right now, he's here. He's present all the time. So it doesn't matter whether you're praying at midnight or you're praying at 7 a.m., or you're praying at lunchtime. He's present. He can hear you. The third thing is that God is omniscient. He's the God of all knowledge. He knows it. He tells us, you know, even as you get to pray, just know that I know it. I know. But I'm calling you. I'm making an invitation for you to come, and we can have this dialogue. Now, the second attribute, we said the first one is his ability. The second one that we need to really know that gives us the confidence to pray is his willingness. God is a good, good father. His willingness to answer us. Many of us don't struggle with acknowledging God's ability. We know. And we keep saying it. Today, if he decided to get rid of us, we would be done for. We struggle with understanding and accepting that God is willing to listen to our prayers. And I believe that the Spirit of God would spur your heart today to believe that God actually is willing to listen to your prayer. Would you pray because he's willing to listen? God answers prayer. David had experienced a God who answers prayer and gives us scripture after scripture about God's ability to answer prayer. Psalms 116, 1-2. I love the Lord because he hears my voice and my cry for mercy. Because he bends down to listen. I will pray for as long as I have breath. That's what David says in Psalms 116, 1, 2. For as long as I have breath, because he bends down to listen, I will pray for as long as I have breath. Psalm 65, verses 2, which we commonly refer to, it says, for you answer our prayers, then all of us must come to you. God is the one who answers our prayer. I love Mark eleven twenty four. 24. It says, therefore I tell you, whatever... The word is whatever. Have you checked your Bible? Whatever you ask in prayer, believe that you have received it and it will be yours. That's confidence in a new level. Whatever. Whatever you ask in prayer. What is your whatever? Whatever you ask in prayer. So why? Why? Why then again should we pray? Let me bring to you three reasons why I think that we must pray. There could be more, but I believe these three will help you. I love that you're in a season of prayer and fasting. Please fast, but also pray. Fasting without praying is just starvation. Okay? So please pray. The first reason why I believe we should pray is because prayer births miracles. There is no other place. There is no other name. There is no other condition in which miracles can be able to happen. It is in the place of prayer. And so today I want to ask you a question. Do you believe that prayer can actually make a difference in your life? Because until that, becomes, that answer becomes a yes, you will never find the place of prayer. Do you believe that God hears you when you pray? Do you believe? Do you believe? You know, one of the things that I read this week, it was very interesting, that I think it's Numbers 14. When God is telling the children of Israel, the group that will not go to, uh, to the land of Canaan, he told them, listen, guys, this is as far as you're going to go. Why? He gave them reasons. He just didn't deny them the opportunity to get into Canaan. He told them, I'm going to tell you the two reasons why you're not going to go in. One, it's because you saw my miracles in Egypt and in the wilderness. You got to experience my presence when you were there. But even then, after experiencing my presence, you didn't believe me that I could conquer the giants of Canaan for you. And do you know what God called it? Contempt. Who knows the punishment of contempt of court in Kenya? Who has an idea? Maybe a different question. Contempt. When you're told you're in contempt, when you check the dictionary meaning of contempt, it simply means to see something as valueless and worthless and not consider its opinion. 
he considered that contempt, that she would not believe. And so I ask you this question again. Do you believe that God can answer your prayers? I pray that will not be found in contempt when it comes to believing in the power of God. So prayer births miracles. And often, what we hear can very easily lead us to a point of desperation. Hannah did not have the one thing that she wanted most, which was a son. This is the one place she felt she had experienced lack. Because Hannah was loved, it said in scripture, she was loved. Not only was Hannah loved, Hannah was provided for proper. Whatever Penina got, she got a double share to cover. But imagine, I think that was even the point of more pain. Because then it kept reminding her what she lacked, what she did not have. That pain could not be relieved by anything else. And to make it worse, her core wife would not let her prosper. We all know people who won't let us prosper. Moving on swiftly. She taunted her by what she lacked. Verse 6 of First Samuel chapter 1. It says, And her rival also provoked her severely to make her miserable because the Lord had closed her womb. So it was ear by ear. That's verse 7. This taunting was not a moment by moment. It wasn't something that took a few months. When scripture says ear by ear, they were serious. So can you imagine someone who turns you ear by ear? Like we've jumped, what was it? What are we calling the millenniums? And the person is still available to taunt you about what you don't have. They keep reminding you. I know a few people come to your mind. Imagine with me the sound of your rival, of this person that you really don't like. They keep provoking you ear by ear. It is true, Hannah needs a miracle. Surely this needs a miracle. Because there is nowhere else. Hannah is going to get a child. And you know what's amazing? Is that God knew that Hannah needed a child. Hannah needed a child. So Satan, who is the enemy of our soul, knows how to perfectly speak defeat to us when we're in moments of desperation and to taunt us or to keep inflicting pain in us till we get to the point where we think that the things that we do not have is because God has denied them from us. But there is a place of prayer. If there is anything the enemy is bringing to your attention right now that you do not have, please change your frown to a smile and tell him, today I'm learning the secret. There is a place of prayer. And when I walk in into a place of prayer, it's not about me. It's about the power of the responder. And I'm coming to a God that I believe who is able to hear my prayer. So there are many examples that I could speak about, about taunting that happened in scripture. Allow me not to read this one because of time, but please, when you find time, read First Samuel chapter 17. It's the story of David and Goliath. This guy had been taunting the Israelites for 40 days. He would literally wake up every morning and show up and tell them, give me a man who can fight with me. And let me tell you what happens with taunting. Is that the person who is taunted loses their voice. And that is why Hannah was in the place of prayer. She was praying, but she had no voice. The Israelites had an army. They were in a camp. They were even... <laughs> They had seen God win wars for them before. But because the enemy kept taunting them, they couldn't speak. They were silent. It is only until after David has killed Goliath that these guys realize they have a voice. And they start shouting now and singing. Look at Hannah. She had lost her voice. But when she comes back to the temple at the end of 1 Samuel chapter 1, and she says, it is I, the woman who was here praying. You would not believe that this is the same woman who was praying and there was no voice. So in the place of prayer, we find our voices so that we can be able to give our commands. Okay? So I don't know what's provoking you or taunting you this morning. Is it singlehood? We have to jump out of the Maybe there are some of you who are like me here. See me off camera. I have a comeback to that. A graceful one, eh? Is it that couple who is waiting for a child? Have you been praying for something? And believing God for that miracle? Is it you who is looking for a business? The place of prayer is where God allows us to work in partnership with him to birth miracles. 
Friends, God is not malicious. Please turn to your neighbor and tell them, God is not malicious. His desire as our father is not for us to keep nagging. How many of you like your children who keep coming to repeat things? Daddy, to nataka pizza. Daddy, to nataka pizza. Daddy. It becomes a song. God is not malicious. God hears and answers prayer. We can count on that. John 10.10 10 says, The thief comes to steal, kill, and destroy. But I have come so that you might have life. And not just life. That's what I like God. He's the God of extra. Not just life. Life in full. Because Hannah prayed, she received her miracle. So how many Samuels can you point to your life? How many Samuels right now in your mind can you point in your life? You know, Hannah named Samuel. Hannah named Samuel, Samuel, if you understand what I'm trying to say. That's verse 20. It says, and she bore a son and called him Samuel. Why? Because I have asked for him from the Lord. So how many Samuels can you point out in your life? Things that you prayed for. I love the testimonies that I heard. How many things can you point out and say, this is my Samuel? Because I asked of it from the Lord and God gave it. Our testimonies are not just for us. Our testimonies are for others so that God can encourage them that he's a God who answers prayer. John Wesley says God does nothing except in response to believing prayer. So believe now and ask. And I believe there is something in your heart that God has placed in you. The boldness and the courage right now to ask. And I'm believing not just the small things, the big things, the earth-shaking things, because those are the things that delight the heart of God. When we pray bold, audacious prayers, God comes and he's like, Ati, what did she just say? And he begins to rally the armies of heaven. When we say that God is a God of angel armies, God is a God of angel He has a workforce that he can rally to ensure that your prayer is answered today. Are we still together? So the second thing that I would like us to believe is the reason why we must pray. It's because in the place of prayer, prayer changes our focus. And I would like us to look at 1 Samuel chapter 1, verses 10 to 11. It says, In her deep anguish, Hannah prayed to the Lord, weeping bitterly. And she made a vow, saying, Lord Almighty, if you only look on your servant's misery and remember me, and not forget your servant, but give her a son, then I will give him to the Lord for all the days of his life, and no razor shall ever be used on his head. Our spiritual focus speaks to the revelation that we have about God and about the things that God is accomplish, accomplishing here on earth. And the more specific and God-focused we are when we pray, the more we'll be able to see answer to our prayers. Hannah realizes, mm -mm, this wasn't about a child. If it was about a child, God would have given me a child a long time ago. If it was just about a child, he would. Revelation gives you perspective and allows you to change your focus in your prayers to just moving them from just being about yourself and making them accomplish God's agenda in that season. So Hannah, that particular point, before that, she, all she wanted was a son for her and her husband. Then she realizes, no. I need a son because God needs a prophet. Have you read First Samuel to see the story of Samuel? In that season, God needed a prophet. But Hannah needed a son. So it was very easy. Two, two problems that can be solved with one solution. Give me a son. Why? So that I can give him back to you. Because you also need a prophet. Because in those days, God was quiet over Israel. Not many of us would beg God for something with an accompanying vow of giving it back shortly after receiving it unless you are in, the, you're in a place of revelation. Not many of us will tell God, give me a car and as soon as it arrives, I want to give it back to you. Because more often than not, our prayer is, give me, give me, give me, give me, give me. It's for me. 
And could it be the reason why our prayers don't get answered? Because God is looking in heaven and he also has an agenda. God's agenda must always lead the way. It must always lead the way. The building of the tabernacle in Exodus chapter 31, verses 1 to 6. Just note it down and you can go and read. It speaks of a man who God specifically skilled so that the work of the tabernacle can be done. It says in verse, um, verse 2, See, I have chosen Bezarel, son of Uri, the son of Hur, of the tribe of Judah, and I have filled him with the Spirit of God, with wisdom and with understanding, with knowledge and with all kinds of skills to make artistic designs for the work of gold, silver, and bronze. If you read through, you will see that God looks at his need, and then he finds a man. And then he's like, I'm going to skill him so that my work can be done. God's agenda must lead the way. So what have you been asking God for? And is it self-focused? Is it me, 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 me? Or is it God-focused? I want you to ask the Holy Spirit to give you the power of revelation, to show you what is it that you can partner with God in bringing here on earth. Because you see that need can be connected to a need that God has that draws his agenda. And even as we speak about the Holy Spirit, he's so important when it comes to pray. And I know Reverend Gita, we had a conversation and he promised me that you're going to be doing a, a series on the Holy Spirit very soon. But in the meantime, let me recommend two reads that you need to read. One, Good Morning Holy Spirit by Benny Hinn. Please find that book. Or number two, The Holy Spirit and His Gifts by Kenneth Hagin. Because you will not be able to do much in the space of prayer without the Holy Spirit. He's the one who's able to give us revelation, to be able to know, oh, this is what you need. Okay, this is how you can make prayer for it. Because Romans 8 says, we do not know what we ought to pray for. We could spend our hours praying and still at the end of it not have done much. Heaven is in need of earthly partners so that the kingdom of heaven can be established here on earth. Are you going to be that partner? that partners with heaven, Hannah knew she needed a son, but heaven needed a prophet. The earth, God needed a prophet on earth. The third thing that I would like us to look at is that prayer transforms us. Prayer transforms us. Now, our pain can either move us towards God or away from him. And Hannah goes to God with her pain and she's able to turn it into prayer. This was not a half-hearted prayer, but an outpouring of her soul. All of her greatest longings and deepest desires were brought to the throne of God with the acknowledgement that only he could turn the situation around. This is the essence of our worship, when we realize that only God can change our situations around. And Hannah understood the importance of using prayer as a tool of worship. So as she worshiped, her life was transformed. Where do we see this? We see this in 1 Samuel chapter 1, 17 and 18. After she has prayed, Eli says, Go in peace, and may the God of Israel grant you what you have asked of him. Then in verse 18, it says, She responded and said, May your servant find favor in your eyes. And she went away and ate something. What does your Bible say? And her face was no longer downcast. The Hannah who went in to pray is not the Hannah that walked out. The Hannah who went in to pray is not the Hannah that walked out. Hannah doesn't even have to wait. Isn't it amazing that she didn't have to wait for her answered prayer? She even ate. But in that place of prayer, I'm sure God must have confirmed to her and told her, yes, now we are talking. Heaven's agenda is priority. And so we are going to come and join with you to be able to bring change even here on earth. Luke chapter 9, 28 to 30 speaks about the transfiguration. And we also get to realize that it was during the time when Jesus was in prayer that transfiguration occurred. Verse 29 says, as he was praying, the appearance of his face changed. As he was praying, not when he was done praying, not before he prayed, as he was praying. 
Are there things in your heart that you have told the Lord time and time again? You keep saying, this is the way I am. I just don't like it. This is the way I am. I'm impatient. I'm not kind. Let me share with you a secret. It's in the place of prayer that God transforms us. I love Isaiah 40 verses 31. And I know we can quote it anytime we are asked to. But listen to what it says and let's ask God for a, a fresh revelation to what it means. He said, but they, but they that wait upon the Lord shall renew their strength. They shall mount up with wings as eagles. They shall run and not be weary. They shall walk and not faint. And when I think about prayer, and I think about waiting on the Lord, they mean the same thing. So if I could try and translate that, it's, and those who pray. Because waiting on the Lord is not a factor of time. It's not us getting a seat and saying, Nimekachini, let me be seated to now wait on the Lord. We wait on the Lord in our prayer. And so those who pray, those who wait on the Lord, as you wait, pray. It has promises. Shall renew their strength. Have you been losing your strength? Have you been doubtful? Have you been discouraged? Those that wait upon the Lord shall renew their strength. They shall mount up with wings as eagles. Meaning that they will get a different perspective to the way things are happening. That's the place of revelation. As Hannah was in prayer, God says, no, I need a prophet. You need a son. We can do this together. Shall scale up the heights. In prayer, we mount up on the wings as eagles. God is able to elevate us to a place where when we look down, we're able to see our situation from a different perspective and be able to pray with revelation. But the third thing is that they shall walk, they shall run and not be weary. They shall walk and not faint. Meaning that it's in the place of prayer that we get renewed. So prayer has the power to lift you out of despair. Prayer has the power to change your emotions. Prayer has the power to enlarge your vision. Prayer has the power to soften hearts. Prayer has the power to lighten the Lord. And prayer has the power to refresh the soul. What is your prayer today? What is your prayer today? Allow me to join with you so that we can believe God in prayer. And I would like us to take a few minutes. Rev, please give me a few minutes for us to engage in a bit of prayer. Just for a few minutes. And I want us to pray over three items, but we'll pray one by one. One is the place of salvation. We said prayer is a tool of communication. And it's based on relationship. We can't be able to do it if we have not been praying. If we, have no, no, if we are not born again. The beginning of the great commission, great communication is relationship. So do we have anyone here who would love to give their life to the Lord? That will determine your ability to be able to stand before God. To them that believed, he gave them the power to become the, the children of God. We only become the children of God when we accept him as our Lord and Savior. Is there anyone any amongst us who would like to begin to believe in God today. Just shoot up your hand. We are going to pray with you. I'm going to give you some time to make that decision. Is there anyone of us would like to give their lives to the Lord. So believing that all of us who are here are born again, then we can be able to take time to go into the presence of God as his children. And the second thing that I would like us to pray concerning is that God would rebuild our altars of prayer. Friends, grace is available for us. 
I know sometimes when we speak about prayer, we delegate it to those people we believe are the prayer warriors. And we say those are the ones who are supposed to do it. But I love the words of 2 Corinthians 12 verses 9. Paul says, But he said to me, My grace is sufficient for you. For my power is made perfect in your weakness. What is the reason that has caused you not to pray? Because there is grace available today. There is grace available today. Do you wish to rebuild your altar of prayer? In your heart, do you need a grace to pray? Let me ask whoever has a desire for that to stand up as a sign to heaven that here I am, Lord, build me up in the place of prayer. If there is anyone who desires that, just, just stand. There's no restriction. Just stand. If you desire to grow in the place of prayer, just stand. Just stand. Just stand as acknowledgement that you have heard the word of God. Oh God, I thank you. Draw us to your well today. God, do us to your well today. To the fountain of living waters where we encounter your grace. Lord, you would not ask us to speak about prayer and that grace is available in the place of prayer if you are not in a position to do it. So I thank you for the men and women who are standing in your presence today. God, they are crying out to you and saying, Lord, I am here. Supply your grace for prayer. Supply your grace for prayer. Supply your grace for prayer. As they kneel down, as they sit, as they walk by the roads, oh God. As they decide in their hearts, Lord, that they need you. Lord, would you supply the grace for prayer? Even as they're in the season of prayer and fasting, Jehovah God. Lord, place of encounter and experience with you should be places of great joy, not places of pain. Lord, places of experiencing, having a moment with the Spirit of God should be places where we get life and not where life is drawn out away from us. So this morning, God, I pray that you will supply the grace Thank you, Lord, that your word says that grace is in plenty. Grace is in plenty, oh God. I pray in the name of Jesus that you would supply that grace to stand in the place of prayer. God, as we go to week two of the prayer and fasting, I pray that, Lord, you will awaken us, Lord, that prayer will never be an inconvenience. Wake us up in the night, Jehovah God. Cause us to tug, tug in our hearts, Jehovah God. Those giants of prayer that have long lost been asleep, oh God. This is the season when you're born out your spirit. This is the season when you're pouring out your spirit God. And as you pour your spirit Lord I pray that you will not forget us who are here. God that you will pour out your spirit in great measure. Lord cause us to rebuild our altars of prayer in our homes. God there are children in our homes who have never known what it is to pray. And woe unto us to raise a generation that doesn't know the solution to the problems of the world is prayer. Woe unto us if we are considered to be the generation of contempt, O oh God. Woe unto us if we do not get to the promised land, Lord, because we fail to believe in your power and in what you can do. So this morning I pray, O oh God, that your grace would be available for them that your grace would be available for all of us. Oh Lord, rekindle the fire, the fire of prayer in our homes. Rekindle the power of prayer in our homes, oh God. And as we pray, Jehovah God, cause us to have koinonia moments with you, moments of fellowship, moments of transformation. Moments when our focus is changed. Moments of revelation. 
Holy Spirit of the living God, you are our teacher. You are our teacher. There is nothing we can do without you. There is nothing we can do without you. So Holy Spirit, teach us what it means to pray. Teach us what it means to pray. Teach us what it means to tarry in the place of prayer. Lord, let there be transformation and changes in our families. Let there be transformation and change in our lives. Let there be transformation and change in our nation. Let there be transformation and change in our country, oh God, and in the world through the power of prayer. Rise up generations for yourself. Rise up generation of prayer in TCT. This morning we rebuild the altar of prayer in this church. This morning we rebuild the altar of prayer in this church, Lord. If there is a place where we have slaked, Lord, we ask that you would forgive us. If there is a place, Lord, where we never made prayer our priority, would you forgive us this morning? Lord, as there was light and there was a fire burning in your tabernacle, in your temple, Lord, that signified the presence of the Holy Spirit, I pray that, Lord, a fire be raised up within us, O God, a holy fire that calls us to the place of prayer. We thank you, Jesus. We thank you, Jesus. We thank you in advance as Hannah did because you have done it. We thank you because you have done it. We thank you because you have done it. And we exalt your glorious name. I just want to make one more prayer request. You may sit, you may just sit. So the people who will just be left standing are those that I'm going to ask. We cannot say that in prayer is the place where miracles are birthed and not pray for miracles. So quickly, if you need a miracle, we're in the place and in the mood of prayer. Just rise up and let's believe God together for that miracle. I don't know what it is, but Mark 11, 24 says, whatever you ask in prayer, believe that you have received it. Whatever, whatever. Lord, we are standing on that word this morning. And so as we stand and we trust in you for the miracles, I don't know what they need. And thankfully so, I don't know. Because maybe my heart would be afraid. But I thank you, Jesus, that I know you. And you know them. And you know their needs, oh God. Before they even mention them in prayer today, oh God, you knew about it. So Lord, this morning, we take the place of commanding and asking for miracles. Decreeing miracles in the name of Jesus. That even in this season when we soak ourselves in prayer, let there be testimony after testimony. Oh God. Oh God, we pray that there will be testimony after testimony, Jehovah God. That Lord, the men and women who will line up to share what you have done for them, oh God, will leave our hearts encouraged, oh God. As you teach us the place of prayer, show us the evidence, show us the evidence of the power of our prayers. As we make this prayers of declaration, show us the evidence, oh God. We thank you, Jesus. We thank you that there is nothing that we have asked from you this morning that you are not able to do. Everything is possible with you. And so we commend ourselves to you and to the power of your words. We believe in your word, oh God. We believe in you. We believe in your willingness to help us. And so we consider it done. 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 Thank you, Holy Spirit. We thank you for ministering to us so powerfully today. God, in everything that we have learned today, may you be glorified. That's the only desire of our heart, that you would be glorified that men and women would come to know you. And Father, as I was standing up here, I see empty seats. So I begin to call men and women to come and fill up these seats in the name of Jesus. Oh, salvation is for us and our families. 
and for our neighbors and for this town of Thika. So we will not leave any man behind. So Heavenly Father, wherever they are, even those that are in the trenches this morning, after having a night of drinking, we call them back into the kingdom of God this morning. We call them back into the kingdom of God this morning. We call them back into the kingdom of God this morning. From the north and from the south, from the east and from the west, oh God. Let your children return to the house of bread. For there is bread available for them. Let your children not die of starvation by the roads. Oh, we come against the enemy who is killing the lives of men and women in Thika town. Oh. Satan, the blood of Jesus is against you this morning. The blood of Jesus is against you this morning. And we decree freedom of our sons and daughters, of our children, that they will return back to the house of bread, that they may find bread that God has made available. We thank you, Jesus. We honor you. We praise and exalt your glorious name. Be glorified. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Amen. Amen, 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 amen. Let me tell you the prayer that I've made for you people. That uh, we will get out of this place. By the time we are coming back, we'll have a testimony. Like Hannah. Who said, That pardon my Lord, as surely as you live, I am the woman who stood here beside you praying to the Lord. That's my prayer for you, that you'll have that testimony, that God, I'm trusting you for restoration of that family, and I am that woman who trusted you. I am that man who trusted you for that, and God, you've done it for me. Whatever it is that you're trusting God for, I believe and trust that it will be done for you because our God is faithful and he is gracious. We continue our sermon series next Sunday, continue studying the story of Samuel because that's our base, that's how we are basing our series this uh, time and our God will bless us. We continue with our 21 days of prayer and fasting and every day we get to send us the um, prayer guide and our prayer for today, uh, Pastor Carol, Shiko, is this, that ask God for nations and peoples as our inheritance. That's our prayer today. Pray against every obstacle, hindrance, and resistance to our growth. And pray that our God would reach multitudes from every nation, every tongue, and every tribe. That is our prayer today. And I believe that God will grow us in ways that you've never imagined because he is God. So our online congregation, may our good God bless you. Keep logging in, keep being part of this uh, congregation and our God will bless you in Jesus' name.